time for us to do a little bit of Rewind, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theatres on Rewind. This segment, we talk about the film celebrating birthdays today, this, or at least this week. We look at the films turning 10 years old this week, and we look at the films turning 20 years old this week. So we start with the 10-year anniversaries. Turning 10 years old this week, we have The Man with Samuel L. Jackson and Eugene Levy and The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Turning 20 years old this week, we have National Lampoon's Senior Trip, The Tie That Binds, and Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Ju Julie Newmar, uh, with... Uh, 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 I was going to say with Blade, with Wesley Snipes, <laughs> and with Dirty Dancing, Patrick Stewart. Swayze, uh, John but I'd love to see Stewart in this, too. <laughs> Swayze. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Swayze. What does this wig for? <laughs> Why are my bosoms smaller than they was almost? Bring, bring me my corset. <laughs> Engage my boots. I want to see <laughs> this Lieutenant movie Wolf, now. summon my bustier. <laughs> Worf, you've this. ruined my wig again. <laughs> Worf, take off that wig. I want to see that but movie Captain. so bad. <laughs> All right, let's start. Let's start with you, Schnapp. The, out of these films, t with these anniversaries, which ones stand out to you? All right. Well, the one that really stands out to me is The Man. I love seeing films I had no I idea that they existed at all. <laughs> You're like, what? when was it? When did that ever come out? Was it like one day? Was it a grab bag Monday? They're like, check it out, dude. It's The Man. You never thought you'd see Eugene Levy and Samuel L. Jackson in the movie, and no one did. Because I don't even does yeah. anyone know no, about that film? Nobody did. It wasn't funny. But here's the thing: it was it was Eugene Levy who is a comedic master. Oh, of course, right. Eugene S Levy. SCTV. I love him. SCTV. Yeah. I mean, he is a genius comedically. But at the time, he was actually had he was kind of hot at the time because of all the American Pie stuff. Right. So they thought, let's give him his own vehicle. They paired him up with Samuel Jackson, and it reminded me of a poor man. I'm going to forget the name of the movie. But a poor man's version of that Martin Short and uh, pure luck, Danny Glover. Inner space, pure luck. Thank oh. you very much, mm. with Danny Glover. It reminded me a bit of a poor man's version of that. That actually, that movie had some laughs, a, a right. few laughs to it too. The man, however, did not. Mm. I mean, it, it it basically lasted as long as you think it was going to last in theaters. The ones that stands out to me is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I, that was sure. actually a pretty cool little horror film. And it was our first look at director Scott Erickson, who went on to direct the first Sinister. Derrickson. Derrickson, thank you. Uh, Patrick Stewart. And more <laughs> importantly for us right now is the fact that he is also the dude who's directing the uh, Doctor Who movie. I know, Doctor Strange. <laughs> who's directing the <laughs> I Doctor wasn't even going to correct him. <laughs> to, to, he's going to be directing the new Doctor Strange movie, and that gave us a first look. And J it, Jennifer Carpenter, if those of you who have not seen the movie, you might remember her as Dexter's sister. In, uh, as the police captain in Dexter. She was great, actually, in this movie. So you should check that out if you have a chance. Um, and I remember watching The Tie That Binds just cause, because Moira Kelly was in it. And uh, and that's about it. So what do these films stand out to you? Is Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. I remember when I was a kid, me and my brother and a few friends, we went to go see something. I can't remember what the movie was, but that trailer came on. And we're watching it like this could be a hilarious comedy. Like at the time, you have Swayze and Stewart and Wesley Snipes <laughs> and John Leguizamo. Those are all like pretty big stars at the time. And it's like, oh, this could be really funny. And then the movie comes out. And I never actually saw the movie. And I don't think a lot of other people did, too. I think it was a box office flop because it had a lot of stuff behind Behind it and people just didn't really it just looked too weird at the time and so you want to go back and say well now the way that the the current politically correctness goes is this movie ahead of its time we were talking about this yeah. in the pre-production meeting mm -hmm. is it ahead of its time or is it is it a very dated movie that you probably shouldn't show today according to you it actually does hold up pretty well i uh, honestly there was one listen now granted i have not seen it in a while right but it and i, I know a lot of people hate on the film for for strictly cinematic reasons I thought it was a charming kind of movie. But yeah, we were talking about it in pre-production. It is absolutely movie. I can't believe it's turning 20. It was way ahead of its time. Uh, and I think at the time, a lot of the audiences just didn't know how to take it. And if you watch it now, and granted, I haven't watched it in a few years, but if I'm remembering it right, I, I think it holds up pretty good. And it's kind of cool seeing when were you going to see Patrick Swayze 
and uh, Wesley Snipes in a film together like this? Right. The answer is pretty much never, except for this. And and I thought it kind of held yeah, up. Yeah, it seemed to me like it was selling itself on the shock value. And I think maybe a lot of other people saw that and were like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend two hours watching just, oh, isn't it funny these guys are dressing up? Like I, I wanna see I want a little more meat on the bone, but maybe it is good. I haven't seen it. Sorry. 